one of the wireless mic to ask questions. Please be sure and raise. And uh, we'll start with questions. Cal, now that you've had several practices or a few practices, what have been the, the revelations or maybe surprises to you about your team so far? Uh, no revelations, but um, Marcus Lee's better than I thought. Um, Derek Willis is better than I thought. Just got done watching our practice tape from yesterday. Jared Polson and Dominic played well. Um, guys are learning new ways of playing and are making strides. Everybody that walks in the building, um, the guy that they're saying is to stand out is James Young. But, but every day, you know, we've had NBA scouts in there every day. Um, and they're all speaking about him, and I'm kind of watching everybody, so not seeing it. You know, John Hood is getting better. Jared Folson's getting better. I mean, Willie yesterday for the first time practiced and uh, changed the practice. Now we've got a couple seven-footers on each team, a couple six-nines on each team, a couple six-eights on each team. So. John Hill's the next one. Yeah, I'm just looking at a couple of your comments the last couple of days. It seems like you've gotten the swagger back. Just how excited are you for this game, maybe compared to where you were a year ago? Well, you know, every, you know, everybody keeps saying, well, I sound uh, different. Well, there's there's a process that we teach with, and, and you guys who have watched me know I don't need a team in October playing like it's January. Um, we have not done any defense, none. Yesterday was the first rebounding that we had done. We've done no pick and roll, so I'm not letting them play pick and roll basketball. I'm making them cut and space and create and, you know, instead of two guys playing at three stands. Uh, that being said, uh, if we, we do have an out-of-bounds play on the baseline, we do have one on the sideline, uh, we have nothing, no zone, but what I like is the, the instincts of the players. So their ins instincts are normally right. Um, they're not thinking, they're, they're instinctive, and that makes it kind of fun, especially, you know, as fast and as aggressive as we play. Now, and what is it maybe that's impressing people? What is that? What is it that's impressing people who come here about James Young and what have you seen? He them? is really fast. Um, he's now not settling for jump shots. So you're seeing a young man get his head and shoulders by people, take contact and make baskets, which a month ago he was not going in there. Um, in transition, he's kind of like Michael Kidd. If he's out ahead, you throw him the ball. Something good will happen. Um, and he has a chance of being a terrific defender. You know, part of what happened to us last year when, with Nerlens, some other guys that we thought would be good defenders really weren't. I think this team could and should be, not just because you have a shot blocker. We have a couple of big kids. Um, we can guard the ball better. John, you, you've been quite open about 40-0 and 0 as a goal or a target. And most coaches say, you know, the day-to-day -day process is what brings results. How do you... Well, what I've said, it? let me, let me, again, feel like Jay Carney up here. Um, <laughs> let me again tell you what I've said. For about eight years, I've said before I retire, I would love to coach a team that goes 40 and up. Now, as a Democrat, you can say what I said. As a Republican, you can say what I said, but I'll say it again. I've said for eight to ten years, before I retire, I would like to coach a team that goes 40 and up. Will that happen? I don't know. Uh, every game we play, we play to win. We're not playing any game not to win. The reason I like the mentality of every game matters is um, you don't want to get upset by people that you shouldn't be beat by. That, that game matters as much as a North Carolina or... Michigan State or whoever else, those games matter too. Um, we don't talk about it as a team. I mean, I don't, it's not like, oh, we're going 40, no, we don't. This is, the way we do this is a process. Now, being that's something I would like, who knows whether the team would like that. Now, that being in mind, 
I've had three teams that almost did it. We started talking. Three teams almost did it. And by not doing it, we won the most games in the history of the NCAA. No team has won more team games, two of my teams. So, you know, you may not go 40 0, but you're doing special things. Now, sh should this team be the number one team in the country right now? You've seen them win any of us? I haven't seen anybody else. I really don't know. From what you've seen, and they have the potential. I really, I don't know anybody else, so I can't really tell you. I mean, I, you know. You've coached number one teams before, though. They have. You have but I had, they were veteran teams. You know, so you're talking about an inexperienced team. We'll be the most inexperienced team in the country. But we're really talented. We've got great size and speed and skill. Will they come? Will we be a great defensive team and rebounding team? And will we share the ball? If we do that, we have a chance to be one of the best teams in the country. Are we right now? I have no idea if we don't know where anybody else is. Right here, Pat Independent of experience, is this the most talented team we've had? Um, well, that first team I had here was really talented. Like, that first team was like, woo, uh, 2012. You know, we, it's funny, we talk about the 2011. How did we ever get to the Final Four? You know, I'd like to say it's my coaching and my system and my style of play and all that, but Brandon Knight's in the league. Terrence Jones is in the league. Deron Lamb is in the league. Josh Harrelson's in the league. Darius Miller's in the league. Uh, DeAndre Liggins is a league player. You know what I mean? We, we had good players that year. They just weren't as good as the year before. Um, I'd like this to play out a little bit and look back. I mean, I, I will tell you, we this team is deeper than that team. We have a couple more that we didn't have, but, you know, you just had two guys sign max deals in the NBA. So... You know. Kyle and then Jerry. If you can remember back to this, compare how you felt about that 2012 game at this stage when you look at them, when you watch them practice, and however many number. How does that compare when you look at these guys and see what they can do early? It's a totally different backdrop now. We just lost in the first round of the NIT, so I'm seeing this group. That group's coming off the Final Four, and if we didn't win a national title, it was a total failure to try to build that up so that we would fail. So, I, I, I like, you won't believe this, I like my team. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody that's watched us know we have good kids that are listening. Um, that are sharing. Um, we had the women's clinic, 660 women come out. And as we did go up and down, I saw some showtime stuff. Now, is that what's going to happen when there are people in the seats? I don't know. Hope not, but I saw a little bit of stop. Why did you do that? Where did that come from? Well, there's people here. I'm going to show them some stuff. So there's a lot. We're just, you know, I don't think it's going to happen, but we could start five freshmen. I don't think it's going to happen, but it may, because I basically I don't make that choice. But there's, if it could happen, Jerry, Jerry Tipton, Fox News. What? Who uh, <laughs> <laughs> from Fox? Jerry Tipton, Fox News. What? Uh, <laughs> the Republicans have shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Democrats are trying to feed him. <laughs> what, uh, how would you describe the leadership qualities of Julius in terms of playing hard or just being a good player? What, what components add up to a good leader? What's needs? happening right now, um, we're playing him in a position as though he's a two or a three. 
And so he's just now getting comfortable being starting from 20 feet out. You still have to offensive rebound, which he is not. He's not defensive rebounding the way he needs to. Um, he is driving the ball better and recognizing better, um, trying to figure out when do I shoot jumpers, when do I drive. Yet, that being said, he's still playing hard. And you know, yesterday, the, the thing, we had an unbelievable practice until 15 minutes to go, and then they all backed up. And it starts with one or two guys. We didn't finish the practice. Um, so, but he is, uh, you know, he's 6'9", 250, and he's, you know, he's skilled. Um, but I don't want to play him under the basket. That's not preparing him for what's ahead for him. I could play him at seven feet and try to win college games, tell him I'm really helping you. Or I can make him play out on the floor like we did Patrick Patterson. If you remember, Patrick went from standing under the basket to playing at the top of the key offensively. And um, so it's going to take him time. I mean, that, that, that's probably why people walked in and, and looked at James Young. It's more natural for him. He's playing like he naturally would. And the other guys are still learning and trying to get their feel, their feet underneath them about how they're going to play this new way of playing. Brett Boston and Matt Well, I, I've been saying that again for 10 years. I've said the same thing, and then everybody says, "Well, he's only saying that because he's trying to get at scoring is going down because we foul more." So now they're going to say you're not fouling. If you put a body hip check on a guy dribbling full court, it is now a foul. If you hold a guy from getting open, it's now a foul. It's automatic. <laughs> Uh, do you remember the charge block where I used to go crazy? You had to have your toe off the ground. Now, if you're in an up motion, I don't have to even jump yet. I'm in an up motion. If that man is not standing there, it is a block every single time. There's no more flop. So he comes in, and I drive, and I beat my man, and I raise the ball. You better be standing there, which means, as a driver, your head had to be down to run him over because if your head's up and he's standing and he's there, unless you don't know how to play, you're not going to run the guy over. So I think scoring will go up. It's going to open the game up. Here's what a press will be now. If you want to press and hold and bump, you're going to foul out your whole team. But you can trap quick and try to steal the ball. But if you don't steal the ball, you've got to run back because if you bump that driver, it is now a foul. It's according to what they've told us. The one I'm not sure of is post defense. That's a little bit harder to decipher how they're going to play. If you don't give the guy motion, if you put a hip, if you four them in the back or two, they're going to make calls. That one is a little less clear. But the others are clear. You drive the ball and you get your head and shoulders by the guy and there's contact. Where before they could sometimes say, well, the offense created it. Nope, the rule states you get your head and shoulders by the guy and there's contact, that's a foul on the defense. It's the new rules. It's not my rules. It's the rules. If you drive and raise a ball and weak side defender comes as you're raising the ball and his feet aren't set, and then you continue to jump, that is a block every single time. So I think it eliminates flops. I mean, you can't get there. Unless you're standing there and the guy has his head down and runs, just bowls you over and the cheerleaders and two officials. So I think it's good for the game, but we'll see. They, they got it. What we all say is they'll call it in, 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 in November or December, they're going to call it in January, February, March. They are convinced they are, and I think it's good for the game. In the last few years, you've had three guys in Rose, uh, one of those who won a national player of the award. Is Randall in that group? Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's good, but, you know, we got guys on our team playing better right now. But he is that good, and my thing will be, um, I'll give you an example. I come in last night. I'm in my office about 11 o'clock, 10.30. He's in there shooting. This morning, I hear blub, 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 and I look out my window in the morning. He's got a full sweat going, and he's going to practice today. So when you ask me, does he have a chance of that? Yes, he does because of that. Um, the only kid that worked like that that I've had has been a Brandon Knight who willed himself in the league. 
willed himself to be a top five, six, seven pick. Because physically, you look at him, there's no way. But he willed himself. This kid's got that body and that's But he, listen, he's, we're changing how he plays. So he's not as confident. He doesn't have the swagger that he had right now because we're changing. You can't do it from seven feet. Now get out there and do it from the perimeter. Coach, you said earlier that you want to win every game you play, but then you said if you just want to win college games, you play two ways down low. Can you talk about seeming inconsistency with those statements? If I'm about my players and I and I do right by their growth, we'll win our college games. To make it simple for you. So there's I'm just gonna worry about winning college games, whatever happens after after it's not me, that's Okay. Or I can say I'm really going to work on these individual players, even if I know we win more games with them here, I'm going to teach them here. And if I really teach them and they get going, we'll win college games. It's just a different approach. Okay, we got a system here, so we don't have a system yet. We're going to run more dribble drive this year than since, since 2008 with this team and these rules which means we're going to face a lot of zones and a lot of sagging defenses. So we got to be prepared. Who? Jared Tipton. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've now been here about 25 years, Cal, how he feels like that. How have you changed as a coach this year like this? Well, the only, only thing I'll tell you, we have a, a video that we take in homes in recruiting and it has me at the first press conference. Did you chase me at the... No, you chased the other... <laughs> <laughs> don't don't write history, get right. Okay. Um, and when I... When people see that picture and they see me standing there, they're like, you've aged more than Obama. <laughs> and this job... You, you age. I mean, it's just part of what you do. And it's... You're on a treadmill and I love it. I love the fact that our fans are so active and, and, and a part of it. I mean, we have a media day, and look at this. It's ridiculous. This is what it is here, and uh, it's a different deal. It just is. But, you know, it's what you strive for when you're coaching. You want to be a part of that kind of program. And then the hard thing is sustaining that. I always say, you know, you take mediocre players and try to win, that's one thing. But go take the best players and get those guys to come together as a team and then win with that team. It's a different, it's a different thing. I was just talking to a guy driving in here uh, who helped build a company in Louisville, left the company, went out west, and is trying to rebrand another company. You know what he said? Two totally different jobs. Totally different. We built a company out of nothing. Now I'm coming to an established company and we're trying to rebrand and take it another. It's too different. This is different than, than most of those kind of things. It's a, it's a different deal. Uh, <coughs> I'm wondering if you could give us a comment on uh, Todd Lanner, Sam Malone, and Brian Ball what they bring or, or any sort of comment on, on their contribution? Well, the, the walk-ons, you know, it's tough because I'm coaching those 12 guys and there's walk-ons, it's hard here because it's hard to get on the court. Now, you look at a, uh, you know, Jared Paulson, guess what? He was a walk-on. Now, all of a sudden, if you watch tape yesterday, people walked off and said, man, he's good. Now, think about who he's had to play against every day for four years. Think about the guards that he's had to guard and be out there with. And, and so you want those guys to grow. Um, they're good kids. You know, they're as big a part of the team as anybody. They just don't get on the floor that much. John, one of your players before the Duval began workouts said that in the pickup games, defense has been really something to see. I see you doing that. Is that is that an attitude you want to hear that somebody that doesn't yet know? Yeah, but it's, it's, I don't know if they always played zone and now they're playing the man and they think they're really playing. We have not talked about defense at all. And so, you know, and there's all kind of ways of doing this job. You can, 
help them offensively and build their confidence and then go to your defense when you've got confident players. Or you start right with the defense and we're going to make that our staple and then it kind of squelches that offense because the defense gets ahead of the offense and the offense can't even make plays. We just do it the other way. And it doesn't mean it's the right way, but there's, you know, you want to establish that. And we've always become a pretty good defensive team, but we've done nothing. We haven't done pick and roll defense, post defense, playing a screen. All we do in a dribble drive, you got to guard the dribble. And they start figuring out how to guard the driver. And that's the hardest thing to teach in the game. Carol, what is your thought process when you have this many talented players on your roster in terms of dealing with, with egos, bruised feelings, things like that? I mean, you have playing time, touches. I mean, you're in control, but how do you get Not the really. They're in control. They, they, um, the thing that makes this tougher, in a normal situation, if you remember what Coach Smith used to do at North Carolina, they'd have their top seven or eight, and then they'd bring in the bomb squad five. Remember where they used to do that? And they'd just say, you're going to play four straight minutes a half, and you're going to play four straight. But he had a veteran team of eight that didn't need that extra time. The problem we have right now is we have a brand new team every year, so it's hard to say, okay, we're going to play these seven or eight, and these five are going to play four minutes. Um, you know, but the whole thing is they earn it. No one's promised anything here. Um, you know, you're going to have to earn minutes. Um, I tell them the, the, the thing about sharing the ball. We, we played Louisville in the semifinal game in the NCAA tournament. No one took more than nine shots. No one took more than nine shots. We had the number one and two pick in the draft, and six guys get drafted. So obviously, shots don't matter. Had a guy come in, ah, I'm just not, maybe not getting the ball enough. Really? So you think that's what, how they're going to judge you? You get the ball and score. You really think that's how they're going to? No. So why are you worried about that? Go rebound, defend, run the floor, finish baskets, make free throws, do the things that you know help us win and make you look good. So you just have to explain it. The other thing is, <coughs> as long as the kids know you're about them, you're not saying I'm about you, but really you're about the program or yourself. As long as you're about them, they'll listen. They'll trust you. They'll play hard. You're not getting as many minutes because of this, this, but, you know, we got your back. You're fine. You're going to be good. Um, that's a challenge when you have a good full team. Thank you, Jim. John, after 2010, you said uh, you had to figure out that that last little skit over the hump for a young team, then obviously they did it in 2012. What, what is that element? What can you call upon for these guys? Um, it's, th this will be a team that the, when they get teams down, will they bury them or do they go to showtime? Do they, do they let up off the gas? If you ask me right now, that will be our Achilles heel early. We'll let up off the gas. We'll have it going good and then we'll, we'll back up because that's what they've done their whole lives and they're 18 years old. So some of it is got to get dinged. Um, sometimes you got to take losses to prove a point. I mean, our game with Indiana helped propel us in another direction in 2012. So um, I think that's what will be the case, but I don't know. I mean, let, let them get on the court. We've got tough games early. We've got one of the best schedules in the country. We've got one of the most inexperienced teams in the country. So it'll be interesting.